Okay, I think we're recording right now and I believe we can start. All right, so um, let's start. So welcome to, uh, uh, to the second lecture. Oh. Uh, so today we're gonna talk about systems of linear equations. And um, like I said, um, so, so from now on, we're gonna do the following. The procedure is like the following. I would like you to uh, um, go over the notes before I uh, start, the, before the lecture. So I'll send you the notes like maybe five, six days in, in advance, maybe a week. And then you will go over the notes and then I'll, uh, afterwards uh, in the lecture, I'll um, emphasize on the most important things from the lecture notes. Okay, so Today we're going to talk about um, systems of linear equations. But just a, give me a second. Um, systems of linear equations. So let's start. Uh, a system of linear equation. So a system of linear equations. Um, in let's say n variables is a set is a set of m equations is a set of m um, equations um, uh, each of which in the same n variables, each of which uh, in the same n variables. In other words, what I mean by this is the following. So the system would look like this. I'll denote it th by this by S. And this will be A11 times X1 plus a12 times x2. So this is the most general form of the uh, system, of, of the linear system. Uh, plus a1n times xn equals b1. So this is the first equation. Let's write another one. So a21 times x1 plus a22 times x2 plus a2n times xn equals b2. And we go all the way the last one will be a m1. So uh, this will be equation number m times x1 plus a m2 times x2 plus a m n times x n equals b n. So that's the system of uh, linear equations. Sometimes we call this a linear system. Instead of saying uh, this is a system of linear equations. We say that this simply, this is just a linear system. So this is the most general form of a system of linear equations. And before, uh, before we uh, go and solve and give you some uh, uh, a general um, procedure on how to solve these kind of systems, let me give you some easy examples. So for example, uh, and also uh, but before we go into this, let me tell you what is a solution. A solution uh, of the linear system S uh, is a sequence of numbers, is a sequence of numbers, of numbers, Let's say S1, S2, S n. That is a solution. That is a solution to each equation. Solution to each equation in the system. Okay. So this is what we call um, a solution of the linear system that is that uh, we call this a solution to each equation in the system. Now the question is how to solve. So the first question we want to we want to answer, and this is most important, uh, 
since we're dealing with the linear system, is how to solve the, a, lin a linear system. How to solve a linear system. So that will be the ultimate goal. Well, there, there will be a bunch of methods and, and we, will, we'll, we will answer this question a bit later on in the lecture. Um, but before we go and do the answer this question, let me give you some example. And the first example I have in mind, let's see what happens if we have, so uh, in the case when M equals N equals two. So I have a system of two equations and two unknowns, two uh, uh, um, variables, right? So let's take uh, one, for example, the system. Let me take this system, 3x1 plus 2x2 equals 3 and negative x1 plus 2x2 plus x2, sorry, equals 4. All right, let's look at this system. And I want you to tell me if you see some solutions to this. So this is a system before, uh, how many equations do we have? So we have here, this is equation one. and equation two. So I have two equations. Oh, equation one and equation two, sorry. Equation two. So I have two equations and two variables. So this is uh, what we call, uh, as you can see here, just like I said previously, M equals N equals two. And you see that this system has uh, some coefficients. In the first equation, you will see the coefficient of x1 is 3, and the coefficient of x2 is 2. And then the coefficient of, uh, in the second equation, the coefficient of x1 is negative 1, and the coefficient of x2 is 1, right? Equals 4. Well, you already know from college algebra, pre-calculus, whatever you want to call it, so you can solve this system, right? For example, uh, how would you proceed in solving this system? Do you remember? Substitution. Say that again. Substitution. Uh, substitution. Then somebody says here, Liliana says elimination. Hmm. So the question is what kind of methods? And let's use both of them. What kind of methods? should we use to solve the above system? Well, substitution or elimination? Elimination will look like some people say elimination will work best. Okay, let's try elimination. So elimination method. So let's try this. All right, so elimination method. So you have plenty of options here. So you can multiply the second equation by three if you want, right? Let's, uh, let's do it like this. So the system S will be equivalent with 3x1 plus 2x2 equals three. Uh, and let's write it again equals four, and now I'm gonna multiply the second equation by three. So this will be equivalent with the following system. S will be three X one plus two X two equals three, uh, negative three X one plus three X two equals 12. And now guess what? You can add these two, right? Let's add them. Once you add them, these guys will go away and you'll have here five X two equals 15. So therefore X two will be three. And now you find a, uh, a solution. Oh my, my, sorry for this. My pencil is like 5%. So I'm good, just gonna talk a bit. So we have the uh, X two is, uh, will be three. And then X1 will be what? Can you tell me? 
So now you can simply plug in in any of the equation. So for example, you can plug in in the first equation or the second equation, x2 equals three. So uh, let's uh, do this. So once we do this, we have that three x1 plus two times three equals three. And this will give us x1 to be equal to, um, will be what? Negative one, correct? Negative one, correct. Okay. All right, so this is the elimination method. So this is the first method as it was useful. But now we also have the substitution method. So the substitution method is uh, basically, we just have to uh, substitute. So let's go back to the system. Let's write it again. So S is, um, so it's uh, 3x1 plus 2x2 plus 2x2 equals 3 and negative x1 plus x4, plus x2, sorry, equals four. All right. Let's um, look at it. And um, well, here the substitution method says the following. You can take, you can write x1 or x2 from the first or the second equation in terms of the other one, and then you plug it in into, into the first equation. So once you do this, we have the following. So let's, uh, for example, from the second equation here, from here, you can write x, uh, let's say x2, if you want, is four plus x1. And now what you're gonna do is just, you will plug it in here. So you will have the following. So this will be, s will be equivalent with the following. Uh, in fact, we're going to have only one equation. We don't need to. So it will be 3x1. So this will be equivalent with 3x1 plus 2 times 4 plus x1 equals 3. Or equivalently, this is 3x1 plus 8 plus 2x1 equals 3. And from here, this is 5x1 equals negative 5. So x1 is negative one. So again, I'll have, I found out that X one is negative five and now I'll plug it in here. So this will be, and this will follow that X two will be three. Right? As you can see, we use both methods to, sh to uh, find out uh, the solution for this system of two equations and two variables. Well, can you tell me something in particular that you have? Well, of course, first of all, uh, you need to see the fact that both methods were effective at this, uh, right? Uh, for example, if you want to check uh, if your computations, if you did the computations, uh, correct, uh, right? You just, uh, you can do the both methods. So in this case, um, the solution seems to be consistent in both methods. But now I have a question for you. And I want you to tell me something in particular. Do you see something about the solutions? What, what, okay, first of all, it's a system of two equations, two variables, right? The number of equations coincides with the number of variables. What can you tell me about the solution? So let me write it in this way. So the solution. of S, of the system S, is given by x1, x2 is negative one and three. Okay, so that's the solution. What can you tell me about this solution? Can you? Is it the uh, only solution, maybe? Say that again? Is it the only solution? Uh -huh. So like Gabriel says, it is the only solution. So you don't see any other solution 
right? So we say that the solution is unique. The solution of S of the system S is unique. And this is very important because we will see under what conditions we have unique solutions for a system of um, linear equations. Okay, so now you see um, that we, this is how we deal with systems of uh, two equations, two variables. But now, what happens if we go a little bit further? And when I say further, so let me answer this question. Uh, what happens in the case m equals n equals three. So in other words, we have the following uh, system. So let me give you an example. So example of a system. And let me uh, take one from the notes. And um, let me, the following system. So I'm gonna write it with variables x, y, and z. x minus two y plus three z equals nine. Negative x plus three y equals, and you see in the second equation there is no z, is negative four. And two x minus five y plus five z equals 17. I want you to look at this system for a couple of minutes and to think about it and um, And tell me what you think of it. Try to, try to uh, before we go uh, and dive a little bit into on how, what kind of methods should we use, I want you to think of it like with, without knowing anything, just based on your intuition. How would you approach this kind of system? I'm curious. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to think about it. Also, my pencil will be loading, hopefully. I see a bunch of methods here. So uh, some people would suggest, for example, Morgan suggests to add equation one and equation two together to form another equation. Um, another equation two, well, that's a good idea. Uh, let's see, Adrian says oh, in the second equation. Yes, that's exactly. So you will eliminate probably by adding these two, just like uh, Morgan suggested. Let's see some other ideas. Kobe. Yes, that could be an idea as well. It will be a little bit more complicated. Uh, parametrization. Hmm. Or use Gaussian elimination. Yes, it will go exactly uh, there. So far, I'll combine two equations and then do it again. Mm, yeah, why not? Yeah, that also Carson's ideas will work as well. So that would be like, uh, but the, uh, this could be like uh, the hard way of going after the problem. But we want an easy way as soon as like when you we see it. So once you see, look at this problem, um, what would you do when you look at it? So. Uh, let's look from the uh, perspective of a linear system yet, uh, at, at first. I don't wanna uh, do anything uh, 
to what we will call the uh, associated augmented matrix and then we'll perform elementary operations to that. All right, so let's look at the system first. So how do we solve this system? Well, as you can see here, I have equation one. All right, this is equation two. This is equation three. All right, so once we have this, so let's see, what would we do? So for example, uh, the first, let's see, it's right here, step one. So let's add equation one to equation two. So add equation one. So I'm gonna abbreviate from now on AQN to, uh, to equation two. All right, let's see what do we get. So we get the following uh, system, the equivalent system, x minus uh, 2y plus 3z equals nine. And now we will get, um, when we add equation one, equation two, we will get y plus 3z equals five. And then the third equation, so this is again equation one, this is the new equation two. And now the third equation will stay the same. So it's two X minus five Y plus five Z equals 17. This will be equation three. Okay. All right. Now, what would you uh, suggest? We want to eliminate, can we eliminate, um, Solve for y. Hmm. Uh, do you think we can do something if you look at the equation number one and equation number two? So Morgan says multiply equation equation one. Uh, yes, you can do that. But since we're yeah, okay, that's a that's an idea. It's not a bad idea, what Morgan says. So basically he says to multiply equation one by negative two and then you add them. Okay, great. E yes, and then you will have a system. Yeah, you can do it uh, like this. And then you'll have a system of two equations, two variables. All right, that, that's an idea, that's not bad. Or, or you can do the following, you can add, so step two. Uh, you can add, negative two times uh, equation, um, wait, yeah, negative two, equation one. Yes, exactly, just like, like, all right, let's go after equation one and you add it to equation three plus equation three. Okay, that's great. So we'll get the following system, so S will be equivalent to, to the following, uh, to, uh, to equation three here, so that we know exactly which one is. Okay, so we'll have X minus two Y plus three Z equals nine. Then we'll have Y plus three Z equals five. And now since I said I'm gonna multiply negative two e equation one by negative two, so the, um, and we are gonna add with equation three, so the X will go away. So I'll have here negative, uh, okay. So I'll have negative Y plus, um, plus minus Z, sorry, minus Z equals negative one. So this is the new equation one, equation two, equation three, right? And now at this point, guess what? What are we going to do? What do you think? Do you see, some, what do I get, uh, what did I obtain inside my, um, my, uh, system. Can you tell me? I have a system of two uh, of two equations, two variables. Well, 
we're in y and z, right? So look at this guy here. Equations two and three, they have a system of, of their own. Right? So we can solve this, but anyway, let's keep going. So step three. Step three. So in step three, we can do what? We can add equation two to equation three. So add equation two to equation three. Um, and we're gonna get the following. So this will be x minus two y plus three z equals nine. Um, then we're gonna to equation three at y plus three z equals five. And now I want a new equation three. So this will be what? Two z equals two z equals four. So this is the new Hello. This is equation one. Equation two. And equation three, right? Now, guess what? At this point, yes, exactly four. Uh, yeah, just like yeah, I see Chad uh, saying, uh, mm -hmm. all right, so at this point, I know exactly what happens. So I can find, I can infer that this is Z will be two. And now guess what? Once I have Z equals two, I use, so step four, the last step, Use back substitution to find y and z. Oh, sorry, x and y. X and y. And y. So, what do I mean by using back substitution? Well, since I know that z equals two, you plug it in into equation two. So we'll find out what. So y will be five minus three z from the equation two. So let me be clear here, equation two. So this implies that y will be what? Negative one, correct. And now since I know that y is negative one, I, I, I go back to equation one. I know that x is uh, nine minus, plus, sorry, plus two y minus three z. So this is equation one. And now I plug it in for both uh, z equals two and y equals negative one. And I obtain that x is what? Can you tell me x is? One, exactly. One. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So the solution, so the solution is given by Let's uh, write it here. X, Y, Z is nothing else than just one, negative one and two. And that's it. So that's the solution. All right. So um, what can you tell me about the solution? Just like we previously said. Is unique. Uh-huh. So the solution is unique. The solution of the system S is unique. This is very important. Okay. So this is how we uh, um, how we solve a system of linear equations by just doing substitution, right? So by just, as you can see, by eliminating here, uh, adding equations, multiplying numbers by equations, and so on, right? So this is all, all, all we did. Uh, but, well, uh, mm -hmm, that's a very good question. So Aaron asked, how do you make sure it's unique without just trying a bunch of equations? So, well, well, if the number of, um, 
of equations coincides with the number of uh, variables, then you might you will think that this system might have a unique solution. This is how you think. As long as the the equations in the system are consistent with one another, you know, you, there will be an example and. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it today because I want to emphasize on the most important things, but definitely it's in my notes, which says that, well, you can have a, a system with three equations, three variables, and but one of the, um, uh, of the equation is just a multiple of the other. So basically, yeah. but when you have like three equations, different equations and three variables, then that's, this is how you think this, that the system, uh, might have a unique solution. Anyway. Okay. Now, basically what I did here is just uh, telling you what elementary operations are. So, so what we have performed, but without even saying anything. Exactly. Yes, Ibrahima. Yes, you're right. So what I did here, if you look, if you look at step one, add equation one and equation two. Uh -huh. Step two, add a constant times a equation and you add it to another equation and you form an, uh, an equation. Then we add uh, two equations. So what we did here is nothing else, just, just performing elementary row operations, which I'm gonna talk about right now. So elementary, row operations. So instead of you, you have a, an equivalent uh, option of working with systems of linear equations by maybe you don't want to write the, uh, the equations all, all over and over again. So basically you're just going to write the augmented matrix and you, you, you will start performing uh, elementary operations on the augmented matrix. So, so the aug um before I um, go and talk about the augmented matrix, let me tell you what are the uh, elementary raw operations. So I'm going to write them with red. So the elementary raw operations that we will, you will use in performing um, uh, um, certain uh, operations to the augmented matrix are the following. So the first one is interchange two equations. Then another operation is multiply uh, an equation um, by an by a non zero constant. And then uh, another uh, is add a multiple of an equation, a multiple of an equation to another equation. Okay, so these are the elementary raw operations. But now, so this is, as you can see here, I only have the words equations. So let me put here equations, four equations. So that's what we did. But now in matrix terminology, this three operations, so let me say that. So in matrix terminology, in matrix terminology, These three operations, these three operations correspond to elementary row operations, to what we call elementary row operations, to elementary row operations. which will be the following. So the elementary row operation, I'm gonna write them again. And this now, this time I'll put some numbers here. So 
exactly instead of interchanging two equations will be interchanged two rows two rows then uh, the second one will be multiply a row by a non-zero constant multiply a row by a non-zero constant non-zero constant And the third one will be add a multiple of a row to another row. Add a multiple of a row of a row to another row. Okay, oh, to another row. So these are the elementary operations that we will perform to, to the matrix. So now let's um, do some examples. And the, what I want to do, I'm gonna take the same system again. And what I'm going to do is the following. So let's go back to our system. And in, uh, instead of me solving uh, using um, equations language, I'm gonna use matrix language and I'm gonna perform the same thing. So let's look, uh, let's write the system again. So let's go back, let's go back to our system, S. And the system S was the following. Let me remind you that this was uh, x minus two y plus three z equals nine. So this was the first equation right? The second one was negative x plus 3y, no z equals negative 4. And the last one was 2x minus 5y plus 5z equals 17. So as you can, as you have seen, this is um, uh, a system of three equations, three uh, variables. So what I'm going to do, instead of performing uh, like uh, uh, elementary operations to the equations, I'm going to perform elementary operations on the augmented matrix. So the augmented matrix associated to the system S is given by, so, is given by the following. So let's write the matrix. So the matrix will be the following. I will write the coefficients of the variables and also write the free coefficients. So it will be one, negative two, three, and here I'll put nine. Negative one, three, zero, negative four. And this, the last one will be two, negative five, five, 17, right? This is the augmented matrix. So as you can see here, let me put it like this so that you can see here, I have the matrix, uh, co uh, coefficient matrix. So this is what we call the coefficient coefficients, coefficient matrix, right? And this is, uh, when I add the, of, um, the free column, I will call all this the augmented matrix. So this is the whole thing is called the augmented matrix. So in other words, as you can see, the coefficient matrix is a square matrix. It's a three by three matrix. And in the next chapter, we will see more, uh, uh, we will see more properties about these um, matrices, square, non-square matrices. Uh, in this chapter, we only know how to perform elementary operations and that's it. But the augmented matrix, can you tell me how many, uh, what is the size of the augmented matrix? So this is a three by three. 
Now, what about this? This will be what? How many? Three by four, exactly. So it's a three by four. This is not the square matrix. So I have three rows, four columns. Okay. So this is the augmented matrix. And now I'm going to do the following. So let me uh, call this matrix, uh, let's say, A. And as you can see here, I'm going to perform in, uh, like I said, elementary row operations. So row, this is very important word. So I'm going to perform elementary uh, operations only on rows. Okay. So let's do this. So let's write here, this is row one, I'll write it as R1. This is R2 and this is R3. And the same type of operations that we performed to, uh, um, to uh, the associated system, uh, systems of linear equations and the same type of operations that we perform on the equations, we will perform on the uh, rows of this augmented matrix. It basically is the same thing. All right, so let's do this. So this is row one, row two, step one. And before I go and explain what kind of, op well, I explained, I told you what kind of operations uh, uh, we can perform. Let me tell you, what do I want? I want, to uh, have as many zeros, so this will be, let me remind, let me explain, this will be the uh, dominant one. And and I will try to, prove to have as many zeros below the dominant one as possible. For example, so this is the first entry here, the dominant one, then I'll, I'll try to make here maybe another one and everything that's below this, uh, below this one, I'll have a zero here. So basically I want a zero here, here, and maybe uh, the la on the last row here, I'll ha I will want to have only two non-zero terms. So anyway, so let's do this. So the first step is add R1 to R2 to produce. So basically I'm just gonna do the same thing as, uh, as I did previously to produce a new R, uh, R2. So let's do this. So this will give us, so A will be equivalent with, so I'll obtain an equivalent matrix. So all the, the other rows will stay the same. The only thing I will produce a new R2. So I will have what? So I'm gonna write it like this. So R1 will stay the same. So it will be one, negative two, three and nine. So I'm gonna write here R1. And now this new R1, uh, R2 will be, let's keep in mind this R1 plus R2 is my new R2. So this will give us what? Can you tell me? So it will be exactly zero, one, three, five. Yes, like Liliana suggested. So it's zero, one, three, five. And the last one will stay the same. So it will be two, uh, negative five, five, and 17. So this is R3. Okay, beautiful. All right, so I have a zero here, as you can see on R2, that's great. So my next purpose is to uh, to uh, get another zero where that on the third row where that two is. So what would you suggest? Exactly. So step two will be um, again like Liliana suggested is multiply. The, mm, wait, wait, wait. Maybe negative two. Yes, correct. So add. Uh, negative two times um, R1 to R3 to produce a new, produce a new R3. Okay, great. Beautiful. So A will be equivalent with, Okay, so we're gonna perform only on R3. So we're just gonna copy the first two rows. So it will be one, negative two, three, and nine. So this will be R1. Then R2 will be zero, one, three, five. 
uh, yes, this will be R2. And now we're gonna, uh, we said that the new R3 will be negative two times R1 plus R3 will be my new R3. Okay, let me, R1 here, R3 like this. Okay, so this will give us what? Can you tell me? So this will give us negative two times R1, um, zero, negative one, uh, negative one and negative one, if I'm not mistaken, right? Okay, great. And now I have, as you can see, I have one here on the first row. I have a one here, the second element on the second row. I have zeros uh, uh, underneath them. So I want this negative one here to turn it into a zero. So what should I do? What would you suggest? Step three. Is to do what? Exactly. Well, I would like somebody else to answer as well, not just Liliana. So I will add R2 and R3 to produce a new R3. So the first two will stay the same. So it's one, negative two, three, and nine. So this is R1. Like R2 will stay this zero, one, three, five, R2. And we said that my new R3 will be uh, the previous, so R2 plus R3 will be the new R3. So we'll get what? Zero, zero, um, two, and four. At this point, I can stop if you want. Well, there's one, uh, wait, wait, I forgot to say, for step three was add R2 to R3 to produce a new R3, a new R3. Okay, at this point, as you can see here, I can stop if you want. Well, there is only one thing we need to do by uh, elementary operations. Okay, let's write it, step four. This matrix will be equivalent. So the step four will be to multiply row three, uh, multiply, sorry row three, multiply row R3 by a non-zero constant, in our case, one half, to produce a new R3, a new R3. Okay, so this will be equivalent with one, negative two, three, nine. This is R1, then I'll have zero, one, three, five, this is R2, and then I'll have 0, 0, 1, and 2. This is R, the 1 half times R3 to produce the new R3. Okay. Well, as you can see here, now we can use, now we can use back substitution. substitution and we'll get from here if you look here this will be nothing else than one times z equals two so z equals two and then we go back and uh, you'll find that y will be negative one and x will be one so therefore the solution will be x y z is nothing else than just um, one negative one and two. Again, it's a unique solution. All right, uh, somebody asked something here, let's see. So Bruce, yeah, you're right. Actually, you're right, I agree. You can just, but you know why? Let me, so that I can be consistent with the method. As you can see here, I have these ones here, one, one, one on this, right? And anything below those ones, that, those leading ones, this is the leading one for the first um, row. This is the leading one 
uh, for the second row, and this is the leading one for the third row. Anything below the lead, these leading ones have to be zero. So, uh, so below one in the first row are zeros here and here, right? Um, on the second row, anything below the leading one is a zero here. Well, on the th third one, there is no nothing in uh, beneath with the that one in the third row. So, so I have these leading ones here. So, th that's why it's to be consistent with the method. But yes. I agree. You could have stopped at um, uh, at the step number three, but so that you can see the method. All right. So this matrix here, and also another reason what I wanted to do is because I wanted to this last matrix. So let me so remark. The last matrix in the above in the ex, uh, above example is in what we call is in is in what we call row echelon form. row echelon form. So that's what we, you said, did you say something, Aaron? Anyway, so this is what we call row echelon form. So this is a matrix with that looks in this form. It's called the row echelon form. So I will go back. This is what I mean by row echelon form. As you can see here, I have the leading ones here and anything below them is zero. That's a row echelon form. So as you, as you, can, as you have seen so far, uh, by instead of you can, um, Yeah, well, we will ask, I was asked by Carson uh, about the Kramer's rule. Well, when we'll talk about the determinants of matrices, then we'll talk about uh, Kramer's uh, rules as well. Yes, yes, Daniel, yes. Always you learn, you work from left uh, to right. Uh, that's much more convenient with the augment, on the augmented matrix. Yes, correct, yeah. Anyway, you will see plenty of other um, uh, options in um, um, of solving systems of linear equations. But before I go in, uh, um, let me give you some other example. Uh, so this is what we call um, using elementary tra uh, operations to solve um, um, elementary raw using elementary raw operations to solve systems of linear equations, but there is also um, you can also use uh, so basically this is what we let me be specific. Um, Gaussian. Let me talk about the Gaussian elimination. Gaussian elimination. So the Gaussian elimination is the following with the back substitution. Okay, the first step is to write the augmented matrix, the augmented matrix of the system of linear equations, or let's say associated, associated to the system, to the linear system, let's say. So like I said at the beginning, when I say, uh, uh, system of linear equations. Uh, when I say linear system, I mean exactly the system of linear equations. All right, two. 
Use elementary row operations, use elementary row operations um, to rewrite the matrix, to rewrite the matrix in row echelon form. And then the thir third and final step, you use the um, write the system, the linear system um, corresponding Uh, to the matrix in row echelon form to the matrix in row echelon form um, and use back substitution to find the solution and use use back substitution to find the solution. So that's what we performed to find the solution. All right, so this is what we did uh, so far to, to the system of, li of uh, linear equations. So we use these three uh, procedures and um, uh, well, there was also, if you, I would suggest you look in my notes at page, um, Uh, 20, 20 up to 23 there was an example so I'm, I'm gonna leave it to you to look so study for you uh, example number four from page uh, 20 so I'm gonna leave it to you to uh, uh, to solve the system so see another example Um, from the notes. Um, with on the notes. So basically it's a system of four equations, four unknowns. So it's a system. So the example is a system, a linear system, a linear system. Four by four, okay, four equations, four variables, four equations, and four variables. Okay. Uh, and try to, uh, so, and, ah, Blake asked a question. Anyway, we'll get back to that. That's a very interesting question. Okay, we'll get back to, let me just uh, finish here a bit, but that's a very interesting question. So, uh, four equations, four variables, and use Gaussian, use Gaussian elimination with um, back substitution. So, I'll leave it to you. Uh, to study it, it's uh, basically you're gonna, just going to perform the same thing. So I will leave it to you. And um, now, uh, also there is another example that um, I would like to uh, talk a bit about. And this will be... Um, so, and I think we're gonna uh, stop here. So also, yeah, okay, let's talk about this example. So example, so example, it's example number five from the notes. It's a system with no solution. A system 
with no with no solution. So I want to talk about this quick. So I have the I want to solve the following system, which uh, is the following: it's x1 minus x2 plus 2x3 equals 4 x1 plus x3 equals 6 then 2x1 minus 3x2 plus 5x3 equals 4 oh and 3x1 plus 2x2 minus x3 equals 1 all right but before i go into this as you can see this is a system I have three variables for equations. Ooh. So this is, when you have more equations than variables, then you might be, think that, uh, might be thinking that um, um, maybe the system doesn't have any solution. But before I go and solve the, this, so Blake uh, addressed a very interesting question, which says that what if the bottom row is all zeros? So all the bottom row is formed by all zeros. What do you think is gonna happen? It, so let's think. What do you think? It's no solutions. No solutions? Uh, For that equation. Say that, that again? For that equation, no solutions. You don't need it in the matrix, matrix exactly. So it's useless. I have zero equals zero. All right. Yeah. It's, Exactly. So the solution is inconsistent or the solution depends on Z. So yes, so you don't need that. Anyway, so let's get back to our system now with no solutions. As you can see here, this is when uh, the system is much more inconsistent. So let's write the augmented matrix associated to this, my goodness. So the augmented matrix. Associated to the system S or linear system is given by. So let's write this matrix. So as you as I said previously, this matrix, let's write it A. Uh, right, it will be. Let's write it. 1, negative 2, 2, and 4, right? That's the first row. So let's put here R1. Then the second one will be 1, 0, 1, 6, right? Then the, sec the third one will be 2, negative 3, 5, and 4. So this is R2, this is R3, this is R4. In, in R1, 1, negative 1? Say that again. For R1, shouldn't it be one negative one? Oh, sorry, negative one, correct. Yes, 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 correct. That's good. Somebody, uh, it looks like you guys are paying attention, exactly. That's good. You've, so it's, so you're not bored yet. That's good. Okay. And the last one is three, two, negative one, and one. Okay. What can you tell me about this matrix, the, this augmented matrix, if you look at it? Do you see a difference between this augmented matrix and the augmented matrix pre the previous in the, from the previous uh, exa example? What is the size of this matrix? Four by four, it's a square. Mm -hmm. It's a square matrix, so it's a four by four. Hmm. Four by four matrix, so it's a square matrix. Great. So we want to um, perform as many um, we want to perform elementary operations, and then something will happen when you perform elementary operations. So. So let's do it step by step. So what do you, what would you suggest in the first thing? So keep in mind the, what you wanna do. So this is the, 
leading one here. Make sure that the, your first step is to uh, below that leading one to get a zero. So having this purpose in mind, step one, what would you suggest of doing? So you multiply, uh-huh, and uh-huh, exactly. Just like Kobe says, and perhaps some other people say, yes, exactly, also Liliana. And Kobe says, okay, great. We're gonna do the following. So we're gonna multiply, multiply negative one and add and add to um, to R2, to R2, okay, to produce a new R2, a new row two, okay. Let's do this. So my matrix A will be equivalent with the following. So like I said, this is not the same matrix. So we're performing elementary uh, operations. So this will be equivalent to. So R2 will stay the same. So it's one, negative one, two, and four. Then now, so this is R1. And now my R2 will be, so let's keep in mind what I want. So it's negative one times R1 plus R2 will be my new R2. So having this in mind, this will give us what? It will be zero, one, negative one, and two, correct. Then uh, R3 will stay the same and R4 will stay the same. So let me just copy them. So R3 is two, negative three, five, and four. Three, two, negative one, and one. All right, great. So this is step one. Step two, what would you suggest? Keep in mind your purpose. So negative two times R1 plus R3. Mm -hmm. So multiply, so multiply negative two times uh, R1 to R3 to produce what? A new R3, right? To produce, produce a new R3, a new R3, okay. So this is what you also said, Liliana. Let me see. Yeah, yeah, okay. I assume you said to produce a new R3. Make sure you write it like this so that you know which one is uh, changing. Okay, so we'll have the following. So we'll uh, modify only R3. So this will be, A will be equivalent with the following matrix. So this will give us what? R1 will stay the same. So it will be one, negative one, two and four, so this is R1. R2 is zero, one, negative one and two. R3 uh, now will be uh, modified, right? So it will be what? So somebody said here, let me look. So it will be zero, negative one, one and negative four. Zero, negative one, one and negative four, correct. So this is negative two times R1 plus R3 is my new R3. Okay, great. And now the last one, R4 will stay the same. So let me just copy this three, two, negative one, one. Okay, great. Step three, what do, would, you, would you suggest to do? So step three, Morgan says, um, uh, wait, 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 let me read. Uh, yes, Liliana, Morgan and Neil suggest yes to, uh -huh. okay. So we multiply negative three by R1, multiply negative three by R1, to R4 to produce a new R4. To produce a new R4. And somebody says, Musfik says, what about interchanging those two, R2 and R4? Mm, 
Uh, no, that's not a good idea, Musfik, because keep in mind, if I'm interchanging, I'm bringing a three below one. I don't want that. I only want zero. So anything below leading one, I want zero. So that's what I want. So here I have a leading one and I want a zero. So I will, will get the following. So this will be, A will be equivalent with, um, it will be equivalent to what? One, let's copy one, negative one, two and four. This is our one. So we're gonna multi mod modify only R4. Uh, so zero, one, uh, negative one and two. Uh, then zero, negative one, um, one and negative four. So this is R1, R2, R3. And now my new R4, I said is negative three times R1 plus R4 will be my new R4. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So it will be, it will be what? Neil says zero, five, negative seven, negative 11. Um, yes. Zero, five, negative seven, negative 11. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. and now can we do something else? Step four. We'll get, uh, what can we do on step four? As you can see, what? Do... Yeah. I think Liliana is much more, uh, yeah, it's because you see, if you look here and here, basically these are the same. If you add them, you'll get zeros, which is great. Well, so step four is uh, clear. So add R2 to R3 to produce a new R3. So guess what? We'll have the following matrix. So this will be A will be equivalent with one, negative one, two, and four. So this is, will be R1. The second one will be zero, one, negative one, two. So this will be R2. And now my new R3, I said, this will be R2 plus, plus R3 will be my new R3. Okay, so let's do this. We'll have zero, 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 negative two. And then the last one, R4 will stay the same. So this will be zero, five, negative seven, negative 11. Hmm. Now, look at it and tell me what do you see? Do you see something here? You have zeros equaling negative two. Uh -huh. If you look at row three, Something weird is there. We have that, yes, I see, uh-huh, exactly. Like Kobe, Tamara, yeah, Matt as well. As you can see here, look at this row here. That's not what I wanted. Exactly, so this zero equals negative two. As far as I'm concerned, this doesn't happen as long as zero and two are real numbers. So this is a contradiction. So at this point, I can stop here. So what can you tell me about the system? Somebody said the word just a few moments ago. Mm -hmm. Yep, the system is inconsistent, yes. The system is inconsistent. Yep, that's it. In other words, what can you tell me about the solutions of the system? How many solutions does this system have? Can you tell me? Well, 
No solutions, correct. There are no, there are no solutions to of to our system. S. That's it. End of story. No solutions. None. Exactly. None. Nada. Yet. Nothing. So you can stop here. It's over. So this is how I gave you an example of uh, um, um, of systems that are consistent with unique solution and another system that is inconsistent. So in other words, there are no solutions. Uh, well, there are um, also since I don't have too much time to, um, uh, much time left, I would like you to read from the notes also. I would suggest you use Gauss-Jordan elimination. So, so read about Gauss-Jordan elimination. Basically, it's just going a step forward what we have done so far. So what we have done here using this elementary uh, row operations is what we call Gaussian elimination. Gauss-Jordan elimination is just a refined version of the Gaussian elimination. So this will be on pages um, 25, 26 from the notes. When did you get there with your past application? So, so uh, as you can see in my notes, when you look at them, uh, more example, um, well, I'm talking about example number five, number six. So it's basically, we're gonna take the same system. Let me just briefly, so it's X minus two Y plus three Z equals nine. And then negative X plus three Y equals negative four and two x minus five y plus five z equals 17. Yeah, I think somebody's mic is uh, on and I can hear anything. In fact, everybody can hear. Yeah, Blair, yeah. All right, so this is a system. And then after you perform these elementary operations, uh, we you go so after performing elementary operations you will go to this row echelon form matrix one zero zero so you're all and i will explain immediately zero one zero negative one zero zero one um, um one so this is what we call row reduced echelon form row reduced echelon form and what we, the difference is that i'm not only concerned about the zeros uh, below the leading ones but also i want to have uh, only the first as you can see in the first row i won't, i only want the first one to be no zero then the uh, second two to be zero on the second row, I want the second one to be non-zero. And of course, the last, the, these two have to be non-zero. So from here, I can identify immediately that X is, <coughs> um, X is one. Y is negative one and Z is two. As you can see here, I can identify them like this, right? Anyway. Read about this in my notes. It's basically the same thing. It's just going one step further. So I'll stop here. Thank you very much. So let me stop the recording and now uh,